great all over the world, not only in Egypt. Some of the people say that the sacroiliac joint does not move. So there should not be a mobility assessment for the sacroiliac joint. Others say the sacroiliac joint moves and there have to be a mobility and mobilization for the sacroiliac joint. Now, those two groups are like everything in our life. You will find people having some idea and people having exactly the opposite idea. Now, let's be frank that we should be all the time when you study, when you learn you have to be neutral. Okay? So I understand that today I will give some information. I know that some of you have learned that there is mobility assessment for the sacroiliac joint. Okay? So if I will say different, don't be upset. Okay? Let's continue. Now, the simple anatomy and biomechanics of the sacroiliac joint. Now, before we go through that, we have those types of joints. The fibrous or the synarthroidal, the cartilaginous, the amphiarthroidal, and the articular. Now, the fibrous or the synarthroidal have, are like the sutures, the composers in the teeth, and the syndesmosis. Okay? The cartilaginous are like the synchondroses and the symphysis. Now, the articular are like the pivot, the hinge, the saddle, the plane, the condylite, and the pollen socket. Those. Okay? Now, let's agree about something. That not all the joints have the responsibility of mobility. Some joints have a responsibility of stabilization, and the others have mobility of mobilization. So, the first group that does not, we will say, group A, the refusal, the people who refuses that there is mobility in the sacroiliac joint, and group B, who agrees that there is mobility in the sacroiliac joint, okay? So now, we will say that supporting the group A, that sacroiliac joint, is a stabilizer joint. Its function is to I can all hear. Function is to stabilize, not to mobilize. So it should not have huh? should not have mobility, right? Okay? Now for the second group, what they say, of course there is mobility, but it's a minimal mobility. So the sacroiliac joint must have some kind of mobility, but it's minimal. So the first group will come and say, now, if it's minimal, how are we going to assess it? Now, let's read together. The sacroiliac joint is a joint articulation between the left and right uh, 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 articular surfaces on the sacrum and left and right iliac bones, plain synovial joint, modified amphiarthroidal joint, stable, stable, rigid, relatively with very low mobility. So it does have mobility. So the first group will say, but very low. Okay? Then, effective loop transfer, each sacroiliac joint is about one to two millimeter, connects spine to pelvis, etc. This is the explanation of the ilium. This is the explanation of the sacrum. Those are the primary ligaments around them the anterior and posterior sacroiliac joint and the interosseous sacroiliac joint, secondary ligaments, sacrotuberous and sacrospinous. This is the anterior sacroiliac joint, which is the weakest. This is the interosseous, which is the strongest. And this is the posterior sacroiliac joint, which is somehow stronger than the anterior. Okay, the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligaments. Uh, the symphysis pubis, which is connected with the sacroiliac joint in the closed kinematic chain. Any movement in the sacroiliac joint will be followed by a movement that symphysis pubis, which limit the movement in the sacroiliac joint as well, right? So this close kinematic chain, if there is a movement in the sacroiliac joint, there will be another movement in the symphysis pubis. So that limits the movement, right? Am I correct? Of course. Why not? So all of those matters provide stability. 
All of those matters are the factors providing stability for the cycloidic joint. So, maintained by the interlocking of the surfaces. Now, there is a very important word that we, know we need to say. Okay, so, the, not the first line, second, third, fourth, fifth. Fifth line, rough, irregular surfaces with many large ridges and depressions form an interlocking mechanism with the ilium fitting together like pieces of puzzle. So all of those will limit the movement in the sacroiliac joint and will be factors to provide stability. The interlocking mechanism between the articular surfaces, the thick, strong, massive interosseous posterior sacroiliac ligament, the vertebral pelvic ligament, the iliolumbar ligament, you know it? The ligament between the ilium and L5, okay? And with advancing of age, partial synostosis of the joint, there will be a bone bridge between the two bones, between the sacrum and the ilium. All of those factors will limit movement or will allow movement. Those factors will limit movement. Will I speak Arabic? I speak Arabic or English? Arabic? English? Mix? Because we have Daniel. He does not uh, understand. You understand Arabic? Salam alaikum. <laughs> no, no, I will continue in English. Okay? So the point is the following that all of those factors will limit the mobility in the sacroiliac joint. This is how the weight is distributed on the two lower limbs because of the sacroiliac joint stability. Okay, now, the kinematics, very slight motion is available. The sacroiliac joint are linked together with the symphysis pubis in a close kinematic chain. Any motion at the symphysis pubis is accompanied with movement in the sacroiliac joint and vice versa. The rotational movement maximum is two degrees. The translational movement is maximum two millimeters. Range of motion is increased during pregnancy because of the legacy during pregnancy. Okay? So the point is all of those factors will limit the sacroiliac joint mobility. Am I right? Or am I right? Thank you very much. I, I thought so. The point is group A wins or group B? Group A. The people who are convinced that there is no mobility in the sacroiliac joint are nearer to the truth, right? Because the mobility in the sacroiliac joint is very limited. Okay, let's hear this video. The sound is working. It's not working. Have you thought? Okay, now this is a rough anatomical, uh, this is a rough anatomical uh, video that explains the sacroiliac joint and the link between the ilium and the sacrum, how it distributes the movement, etc. So now we will speak about something. All of those muscles, muscles either comes from or originated from or passing through the sacroiliac joint. So if there is any action in those muscles, there will be effect on the sacroiliac joint. The last video, or the last video before that, was speaking about that anyone complaining from low back pain, antrolysis, retrolysis, the sacroiliac will be included in the problem. The last video said, though, said so. Now, if we agree that if any action in those muscles happen, there will be some change in the sacroiliac joint mobility. That will affect the alignment of the sacroiliac joint. So, the weight distribution will not be that symmetrical. The weight distribution will never be that symmetrical if there is any change in the alignment. Now, if I will move this been a mild millimeters from this finger, what will happen in the liver? Huh? It will move that much. So the millimeters here affected the liver that much. 
My words are the following. If we think about the sacroiliac as the axis, so the lower limbs and the trunk is the liver. Am I right? So there have to be some kind of change in the mobility of the sacroiliac joint to cause some kind of lumbar problems. Right? Now, if, if there were no mobility in the sacroiliac joint, people will be walking like robots. Watch this video. Focus on the robot. The robot does not have a sacroiliac joint. It has a connection between the trunk and the lower limb directly by a manufactured hip. So who walks like that? The old people. No need, no need. Okay? The old people only walk like that. The old people will be walking like this. Right? Who will use his legs to shoot a ball like that? Let's see. Okay? Nobody does that. The human being have a lot of synergy. So, the group B have a point of view. There have to be a mobility in the sacroiliac joint. Now, group A say that we can only assess the sacroiliac joint by the provocation tests. By provoking the pain, not by the mobility. Dr. Muhammad, can you please be my model? Thank you. Brun. Yes. Now, to do the assessment of the sacroiliac joint, group A says that we only have the way to provoke the joint. Provoking of the joint is by direct compression, like that. So I can compress the joint to see if there is pain or not. Now, the second way to provoke, supine. To do it by a pelvic locking technique. That's right, my friend. No, excuse me, like that and like that. Okay? See? So, to open, to compress the posterior sacroiliac joint, or to close, to compress the anterior sacroiliac joint. Okay? Or by the differentiation testing, like the Patrick Fipper test, this to differentiate between the hip and the sacroiliac pain. Or by Menel test. Yes? No, 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 uh, Brun. My menal test to differentiate between hip, sacroiliac, and lumbar. So if I will fulcrum on the level of the greater trochanter, I'll be testing the hip. On the, greater, on the level of the iliac crest, I'll be testing the sacroiliac. On the level of the posterior superior iliac spine, I'll be testing the lumbar spine. Okay? So, thank you. Those are, those are the provocation assessment available testing for the sacroiliac joint. Right? This study is called Streisand. This study is used from the group A. Okay, see you. Have one. Uh, excuse me, not at all. <laughs> okay. This study is used from the group A to prove, to prove that it's impossible to accurately assess the mobility of the sacroiliac joint. Now, the method they used is 22 patients considered to have sacroiliac pain and analyzed by a radio symmetric analysis. What's the radio symmetric analysis? This machine. What they do, they inject like colored balls under the skin. Phosphory. Phosphory enabling release. Radioactive. Thank you very much because it's radio symmetric. So they inject radioactive marbles under the skin. So by this machine, we will put it on the sacroiliac joint, and we will give them one of the testing that's called Rukluff or standing hip flexion tests. And this test is taken from the books explaining the sacroiliac mobility testing. 
what they do they did a hip flexion test above 90 and see the changes of the sacroiliac joint and see and they, they watch it if there is any changes in the sacroiliac joint that can be assessed okay so the results shows that it's impossible to assess the sacroiliac joint manually so that's a great win for group a right group a let's remind you is the group that does not agree about the mobility of the sacroiliac joint so this paper gives a great